I welcome everybody who is interested in science and today I will talk about the paper where researchers were able to fully recreate bird songs by reading only the activity of a specific brain region. Even complex features such as pitch, timbre and the volume of the sound were successfully reproduced in this way. In the nearest future such technologies may help to create vocal implants allowing almost a normal and fast speech for people who lost their ability to speak. So stay tuned and you will know all the details about this recent breakfast. The work was published in the journal Current Biology by a research team at the University of California, San Diego, in the US. Now let's make a short overview of what has been done. Biologists implanted silicon electrodes in adult male birds and monitored the brain activity while the birds sang. In particular, scientists recorded neural activity in the sensory motor part of the brain, which controls the muscles responsible for singing. Also, scientists employed a biomechanical model of the vocal organ of the birds that allowed to link the brain activity to the ultimate changes in the pressure and tension in the vocal organ of the birds during thinking. But in order to use this biomechanical model, which is in principle the set of the equations, one has to estimate some free parameters of this model using the acquired data. And in this step, the scientists used a neural network, specifically a shallow feed-forward neural network with one hidden layer that received the recording uh, patterns of the brain activity as an input and provided values of the model parameters as an output. Then, the estimated parameters were used to reproduce the song of the bird. Now let's take a look at the spectrograms of the songs produced by the birds and see how good can the model capture these songs. Recall that the experimental data acquired from the birds consists only of the recordings of the brain activity of one specific brain region and all other steps are the mathematical modeling. So here is how the song from the bird looked like and here is what model predicted. In case you are not familiar with the spectrogram representation of the sound, you can view it as a, um, a visual way of representing the signal strength or loudness over time at various frequencies. However, you don't even need to go on such details of the spectrogram to grasp the main idea that the drawings representing a real song and the one modeled by the analysis of the brain activity look very similar, which means that the model did a great job. Good job. Good job. Really good job. No, uh, no, seriously, look at this similarity. I mean, if you think about it, it's, it's, it's pretty astonishing because the birds are known for their uh, rich and complex songs, right? And now we can capture this complexity with a brain signal measured by just a few dozens of uh, microelectrodes implanted in one brain region. It, it looks like a mind reading core or sort of that, right? I can read your mind. Yeah, really. Here's one remark. Those who work with neural networks may ask me, okay, man, but why do we at all need the biomechanical model of the song production? Can you just use a different architecture of neural nets, increase the number of human layers, and just produce a song directly from the brain activity? This is what scientists did as well in this paper, using recurrent long short term memory neural networks. In that case, uh, you feed the neural network with the brain activity and ask produce to produce directly the song, so not to estimate the parameters of the biomechanical model, as it has been done in the case we just discussed, but directly produce the song. So here you can see the comparison of the song produced by the birds and predicted by the neural network, directly predicted by the neural network. And now compare it to the prediction of the biomechanical model. Hmm. It's quite clear that the pattern predicted by the biomechanical model outperformed uh, the direct results of the neural net. So take the whole message from that is that we do need the understanding of the biomechanics behind the sound production for the optimal performance. So at least for now, neural nets do not take the jobs from the biologist. For now. Importantly, uh, the usage of a biomechanical model allows us to greatly increase the speed of the song prediction, permitting the implementation of this model in the real time. So why, is it, why it is important? Uh, because the birds, uh, they adjust their songs in response to what they, what they hear, right? And therefore the model should also be fast enough to follow it. Remember, the ultimate goal is to produce this type of implants for humans, and humans do adjust their speech according to what they hear. I mean, in most cases. So these works make an, an important step towards the development of, of the vocal prosthesis. Imagine how cool it will be if the people who lost their ability to speak and now, even with a novel technology, still face the limit in the number of words uh, they can produce because they kind of uh, need to type them, right? For instance, Stephen Hawking used some remaining muscle activities to type the words, which of course slow down the process. Here I'm not even talking about the fact that the produced voice is synthetic and robotic, which is also not uh, the nicest thing to have. My name is Stephen Hawking. 
It's American. Is that a problem? In contrast, the Describe technology provides an opportunity to capture the voice with its pitch, volume and timbre in real time from the analysis of the brain activity. So nowadays we do have implants to read the brain activity from humans. I mean, in that case, the researchers may still need to adapt the exact design and so on, but the technology is there and it works. So now we can leverage our extensive anatomical knowledge of human vocal system to change this biomechanical model from birds to humans and potentially bring the whole voice back to the people who currently cannot speak. So imagine how awesome it will be to have a real-time emotional conversation for humans who lost their voices. Awesome! I hope you liked the video and I will be really curious to see your comments, suggestions and critics in the comments. So let's discuss it. Do you think this technology will soon be implemented in humans or will it face some complications? Do you think it's good to have such uh, technologies implemented in medicine? So share your ideas in the comment section and I hope to see you soon.